Hey guys, welcome to the last seconds of the last days. Guys, we are certainly living in very perilous times. In fact, there are many listening to this video right now that are consumed with much fear, many anxieties, and many cares of this world, whether it is in regard to when the rapture is or to wondering how you are even going to make it through the next day. Guys, I know all this because I've been there and done that. But you know what? I'm hoping to bring a word of encouragement to the body of Christ. I'm hoping to bring a word of encouragement to those of you I hold dear to my heart. In Romans 8, 26, it says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And you know what? That's not all. In Romans 8, 34, it says, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. I definitely love 1 John 2, 1 that says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Guys, we as believers have an advocate with the Father. Amen to that. You know, another name for Abba Father is the ancient of days. You can find that in Daniel 7, 13. In fact, I'll just read it. Daniel 7, 13 says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Guys, for some reason, I just love that name, the ancient of days. Man, guys. Ooh, glory to God. We're going to be seeing God before long, guys. Ooh. But you know what, guys? Right now in heaven, Jesus, who is 100% God, but also 100% man, is interceding on our behalf. Oh, glory. You getting a revelation on this, guys? There's a man in heaven praying for you and me. He's, he's God, but he's also man. He's Jesus. Guys, what do you think Abba Father's going to do when his son's praying? You, I think he's going to answer his prayer. You know what that tells me? Whatever Jesus is interceding about for you and me, Abba Father has a stamp of approval. Glory to God, glory to God, man, glory to God. I'm going to get ready to receive in Jesus' name. Guys, it's like this. Jesus is our burden bearer. I love Psalms 55, 22 that says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Guys, how do we cast these burdens on the Lord? Well, I'm glad you asked. Believe. We just need to believe. We just need to let go and let God. You know, you might be asking, but how do you let go and let God? You know, that's certainly been a question I've asked myself off and on through the course of my Christian life. I have to admit that on many occasions it had been hard to let go of those things that worried me concerning everyday life, just whatever, you know, just consumed with worry and fear. You know, for one thing, I didn't know how to let go of those things and give them to God. I would try so hard many times to do things on my own, then I realized that I just wasn't getting anywhere. Just as it was an act of faith and believing to be saved, God wants us to do the same thing by believing. By believing. 
that he is well able to take care of us in every and any situation. Yes, I've learned to trust and believe that God is well able, but there have been times, even now, that I find myself slipping off into that doubt and unbelief mode. Sometimes I find myself worrying about everything. In fact, if I may, I would just like to be transparent today, guys. Guys, I just want you to know I'm made just like you. I can bless and I can bleed. I can laugh and I can cry. I can praise and I can cuss. Guys, Jesus loves me. No matter what God knows about me or you, he still loves you. Man, you ever think about that? Man, I've had people want me to ask me to pray for somebody, and by the time they gossiped about him, I didn't even like the guy. <laughs> didn't even want to pray for him. <laughs> but you know what? It's like a best friend. They know every, you know, God knows everything about you, and He still loves you. And I'm so grateful for that, guys. But uh, I just want to be transparent today, guys. I, I, I'm 2.5 trillion miles away from being perfect. Uh, I think that'll happen when I get my new glorified body, and I cannot wait. But guys, there have been times through this thing called life that I have had severe depression and hopelessness. Severe depression and hopelessness. Oh, wow, guys. And even my physical health has declined through the years. Things like congestive heart failure, pain and swelling caused by rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, and, and, and a few other life-altering things. And there have been times when it was overwhelming for me. Just like right now, it is hard for me to even walk across a room without getting shortness of breath. But you know what, guys? I'm going to keep my promise to you. I have promised you that as long as I have breath, I will keep making these videos. I will keep talking about Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Guys, I'm aware I'm a teacher and preacher of the Word of God. But even preachers grow weary physically as well as spiritually in life. There were times when the Apostle Paul was sick, but yet... He was a man that raised the dead. Guys, it's, it's just this thing called life, you know. But I have tried my best to keep on the whole armor of God through it all and in it all. For one thing, the love of my family has always helped keep me going. In those times of depression and hopelessness, I would always call out to God. I would always call out to God, guys. Early one morning, God answered me about a care or concern that I was deeply concerned about, and I'd like to tell you about it. I had a visitation from the Lord. God's visitation started off with a dream. I dreamed that I was no longer physically alive. I dreamed that I had come into the eternal state of being, and I remember trying my very best to comprehend eternity. In my mind, I couldn't grasp eternity. I kept thinking that our mighty God had no beginning and also has no end. I kept thinking that I'm going to live forever and ever. I was seeing the magnitude of God almighty and my finite mind could not comprehend it or grasp it. Oh, 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 and then I awoke, and there was an overwhelming presence of God in my room. I'm no longer dreaming now, guys. My heart was beating at a rapid pace. The only thing I knew to do was raise my arm up to heaven and praise and magnify God. And then this overwhelming force that surrounded me began to lift, and a gentleness began to come over me. And I heard the voice from the Spirit of the Most High God speak to me, and he said, Now do you believe that I can do all things? And before this presence 
left my side. The Spirit of God just simply told me, and he said, I got this. And then he lifted. And yes, the Lord knows how to speak proper grammar, but sometimes he speaks to us in ways we can understand and comprehend. I felt at that time that I had a new lease on life. Even if all others were to forsake me, the one who created something out of nothing came to me and loved on me for a while. I was going to keep this to myself, but I feel God wanted me to share this. He said there are others out there that need to hear a word from the Most High God. And he wanted me to tell you, oh God, I feel the anointing. Glory. For all of you out there who are called by his name, the Lord is very, very simply telling you, I got this. Guys, since God is well able to operate and control a universe, he is more than well able to do the same for our lives. Guys, let's begin to access the power from on high. I just love Luke ten nineteen. It says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, if you get to thinking about it, guys, have, have you ever thought about, you know, you don't even use all your brain. You just use a, a portion of your brain, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you've ever truly, really ever thought about it, how much power is God truly releasing in our midst right now? Is it 20%? Is it 50%? Is it 100% of his great power? Guys, I honestly don't know, but I would venture to say that God is not even releasing a fraction of 1% of his power today. That might sound crazy to you, but think about it. If he were to release all his power on this earth, don't you think that sin would be completely destroyed and righteousness and holiness would abound? You know, God is an all-powerful, all-encompassing God, and there is no limit to what he can do. He chooses to release his power through his saints. That's you and me. He, God chooses to release his power through his saints, that is, through sinners that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. We have access to the amazing power from on high, but we have to be open vessels, guys, and allow the anointing that God, the anointing of God to flow through us. Guys, the power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and every power of darkness has been given to us. Let's pray as we've never prayed before and allow the Lord to use us as vessels through which his power can be released. And while we're waiting for the rapture, guys, let's remain Jesus strong because at any second now, we will be meeting Jesus in the air. And I plan to see you there. Much love to every one of you. God bless and Maranatha. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen.
ask, we can talk a little bit about the gospel that's found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Verse 4 says, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. Guys, those are shouting words. Yes, they are. I'm just going to turn it over to Susie and let her present the ABCs of salvation. Hallelujah. And how many know that salvation is as easy as ABC? Yes, it is. The ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. This is where the godly sorrow leads to genuine repentance for sinning against the righteous God. And there is a change of heart. We change our mind and God changes our hearts and regenerates us from the inside out. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and that God raised Jesus from the dead. This is trusting with all your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Every single person who has ever lived since Adam will bend their knee and confess with their mouth, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. If you want to become born again today, then say something like this, Lord, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. I confess now that Jesus is my Lord And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. For it is with my heart I believe and am justified. And it is with my mouth that I confess and am saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in you will never be put to shame. You said that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and cleansing me and forgiving all my sins, past, present, and future, and forgiving me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed this prayer, you are now a child of God. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen.